Corinne Hawthorne took the national stage by a storm in 2015 when she became a fan favorite and top four finalist on season eight of NBC's The Voice. At only 20 years old, Corinne has garnered multiple stellar award nominations, songs placed on film soundtracks, and a trio of number one singles, all before releasing her first full-length album, Unstoppable, on RCA Inspiration. Bringing up conversations about music, about faith, and becoming an influential young adult in the spotlight, this is the next edition of CCM Magazine's Features on Film featuring Corinne Hawthorne. I'm your host, Andrew Greer. I think of how your platform really was built uh, through your tenure, or at least the beginning of it, mm -hmm. from a national standpoint, from season eight of The Voice. Mm -hmm. But I think about your story, like of having auditioned for several other singing competitions, including American Idol. Before that, you really weren't going to audition for The Voice by the time but you I did, did, right? I wasn't. I started auditioning for things, like you said, at the age of 11. Mm -hmm. So that's America's Got Talent, X Factor. When I finally turned the age for American Idol, that was like my dream. Like, I'm going to do American Idol. I'm going to win. This was <laughs> it for me. So the first time I auditioned for American Idol, the very first round, they told me no. So my imagine this. Like, yeah, this is yeah. what you work for your whole life. Because I've been watching American Idol since I was a, a baby. Yeah, like, yeah. that was like my goal. So I just was like, oh, Lord, I know that you have better plans for me. This cannot be the end. So I remember um, my family, like, just figured out how to get some more money to send me to another city uh -huh. to audition. For American Idol. For American Idol. And when I got there... Um, I sung this gospel song and song choice is like really important I guess when you're auditioning mm -hmm. for things I've learned that over the because <laughs> I had time to prepare since I was 11 um, so I just always wanted to sing something that meant a lot to me mm -hmm. and I guess in that moment just singing that song was like okay it has to be something that I can feel and I sung the gospel song and the judge was like do you have something else and I remember I sung Proud Mary and she was like, okay, we're going to send you through to the next round, but don't sing a gospel song when you come back. Okay. Because it's going to eat you up in the competition. And I was like, okay. So I had like a month to prepare for the next round. And the whole time, like I could not find another song that just made me feel mm -hmm. like this is like once in a lifetime opportunity. I need to be 100% sure. I couldn't, I didn't feel that way about no other song. So when I got to the, the, the next round of auditions, I sung the same song. <laughs> Crazy, so ironic. It was the same lady who told me not to sing the song. <laughs> She's like... I walked in, I was like, I'm about to change my song. <laughs> but I still sung it, and, you know, they told me no. So a few months later, my mom came, and she was like, hey, you know... The Voice is coming to New Orleans. You should go. This is such a crazy story because I literally told her no. Mm. I was like, I'm not going because I don't. I had just got told no. So I was a little discouraged and I, it just took a lot out of me. You know, mm -hmm. you put your hopes into something and then it's a no. Your dreams are shot down. So that I was just, the goal. American it, Idol. The goal, yeah. American Idol was the goal. I was hurt. I was so hurt. Um, my stepdad, who's been super supportive of me throughout my whole musical journey, he forced me to go. Mm. For literally, you're going. I don't you're, care what you're saying. Like, I didn't work this hard for you to, right. you're going. So I got to the audition, and I remember I just said a prayer. And I was like, God, you know, I believe. I know that you gave me this gift. I know that you have a plan for me in it. Lord, don't play with my emotions. That's what I, I had to get real. I was like, if you send me through this first round, I believe you're going to take me all the way. So almost like, don't even get my hopes yeah. up. It's just so, I'm so passionate about music, always been super passionate about it and passionate about the fact that I know that God gave me the gift. Mm. So I guess it's almost kind of like whenever you have so much faith into something and then you throw it out and then it just mm -hmm. doesn't happen mm -hmm. so many times. It's almost like, Lord, look, it's only so much I can take. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, that's exactly what he did. He took me all the way to the end. You know, I think about like even in your language and, and when I was reading up some on the new record beforehand and just... The way you speak about music, it feels as if you're speaking about a true calling. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think it's kind of strange that um, this initial pathway to be able to fulfill this calling of music mm -hmm. and of gospel through music came through a reality TV singing competition? I think that God has a plan for everyone and he strategically 
stitches out mm -hmm. the areas of your life and how things are supposed to go. I don't think if it happened another way, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be able to create how I'm able to create. Sure. But I feel like in my mind as a kid, whenever I had this dream, I never thought of it going any other way. Huh. I knew it was going to come from a reality TV show mm. because that's all I watched. I was made for it. Mm -hmm. Reality TV competition. I was literally my whole life. I was trained for it, mm. which is why I guess on the show, I'm not going to say like I was the best, but I feel like I did really well being a 16, 17 year old on the show, like with song choices and being able to live in that because that was my life. I did competitions. So it just is crazy how God kind of knows the scripture, my favorite scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 11. He knows the plans that he has for you. So I just, I never think about it like that, but I know for a fact, if it would have went any other way, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, it's an interesting idea that maybe even that that seed of, of delight in reality TV shows that you were so drawn to that from the beginning. I love and, them. I know, and then that, that I became love to compete. <laughs> well, see, and that's part of your natural drive. I, I also think about like the fact that you even this American Idol judge says, you know, song choices don't do a gospel song, mm -hmm. and you still do it. There's really, uh, and and I think about this the lyrics of the new record, and again, all the messaging around it. It's such like a hundred percent total devotion commitment to God. God is amazing. So now that I step over into my artistry, I just want to reflect that in my music. I guess as a gospel artist, I'm pretty different. Yeah. Like I feel like I'm bringing something different to the table. Do you think your artistry though is, is a direct development of kind of your discipleship in some ways? Does that make sense? Like as you've developed in Christ, as you've developed in your relationship with God, do you feel like your artistry, even the diversity of the musical styles, but also the messaging? Somewhat, yeah. Like some things, you know, over the course of time I've learned, um, I've got more confident. How about that? Okay. Uh -huh. More confident in my walk. But it's always been in me. He's always given me the tools to do what I'm doing. But now I feel like I'm more confident sure. in knowing that, okay, this, I, you can't tell me that I'm not going to do it because I know that he has me here for a huh. reason. And of course, like you said, of course, I'm, of course I'm going to learn more things with my relationship with God that will allow me to like, you still love me uh -huh. on the record, uh -huh. on my album, which I, I was would like, say. Of course I still love you. Of course I still love you. <laughs> you still love me? Yeah, yeah I love you. You better. Um, no, I, there's a record on the album called You Still Love Me. Mm. And I feel like that one is more so of me learning about my relationship with God. It's How he feels about you rather than what people say? I think for me, it was the fact that, kind of like I said, I don't have to try so hard to uh -huh. step into all of this you know, God has given me a lot of gifts and I'm super thankful for it. And I feel like that's what everybody, you know, God has a purpose for everyone in their life. But for me personally, that God thinks so highly of me, you know, and that he is my favorite scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 11, that I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper and not to harm you, that you. And sometimes I don't even think that about myself mm -hmm. or sometimes I'll turn away from what you want me to do. You want me to go this way, but I'll go this way. But you, your plans are still the same for me. And you didn't change your mind because I feel like we all come to a place where it's like, wow, God's love is incredible mm -hmm. for me. So and, I feel like real. that's just a personal thing that I had to learn because everybody make mistakes. I've made mistakes to where I guess in my relationship with God, where I've learned or come to a realization yeah. that, wow, this man really loves me a <laughs> lot. Like he loves me a lot. Uh -huh. So I don't know. It's, yeah, you're making this sound deep. I didn't <laughs> think my album was this deep, okay? Well, okay, we're going to go somewhere else even deeper. There's a, there's just some strong lyrics, okay? Mm -hmm. I, this lyric, the weapons of our warfare are not the weapons of this world. <laughs> Instead, they have the divine <laughs> power to demolish strongholds. So we're talking about the spiritual realm here, and we were talking about this before we started rolling. You know, the spiritual realm in our culture today, uh, I think just culturally speaking, is not necessarily something real popular. It it almost can be uh, described best as a fable or at least kind of mysteriously ambiguous. But it seems like at least from some of your lyrics that you believe <laughs> in the spiritual realm, that you believe in spiritual warfare. Yeah, I do. So much things are going on in the world today. And I feel like people don't realize that we hold the power to change. Mm. And for me, it's very spiritual what's going on in the world mm -hmm. today. 
which is, I, I guess, people don't like to talk about that because they sure. people are so um, what they can see. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What's right in front of us? Yeah. Like what? Mm -hmm. What's right in front of us? No. This is what's why the world is like this. And I'm like, nah. Yeah. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. In my other interviews, I don't talk about it as it's spiritual warfare. Sure. I will go. Well, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the world today, but we as Christians need to realize that we hold the power. There is power in unity. Mm -hmm. So when we take back those things, then we will see we can make change in the world. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, it's the spiritual side of it. We have to go to war against those things that are rising up in the world. This very evil world. The world is evil. Mm -hmm. So I don't talk about it like that. Though. Yeah, that's not a popular... Uh, it's not. Well, it's like what we were talking about earlier, how it's not very popular. Maybe it's not very comforting or something. Like, I, I try it's to not comfortable. It too, that, it's scary. And yeah. I think that we don't want to be scared. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be scared. But until we face the reality of that there are scary things. It's an evil then world. we don't access I power. feel like the stuff that we see on the news, like so many people are just dying. It's an evil world. So I don't understand. For me, it's just like I'm thankful that I realize what it is because mm -hmm. now I know how to fight against it. Mm -hmm. But... I don't know. It's just, I guess it's uncomfortable because it's like, we don't want to think about it like that. Well, it sounds like your eyes are open. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think we walk around fairly, uh, I don't know if ignorance is the right word, but fairly blind, you know, and sometimes purposefully. I want to be comfortable. Yeah. I don't want to think about an evil force trying to ruin my yeah. life. Yeah. Just want to, yeah. amen, hallelujah, God is good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was reading in your... I think it was in the bio that part of the purpose of your songs, the design of them, is inspiring people to be fearless to persevere through any circumstance. I was wondering, like, I, I could see some people being like, okay, that's cool, <laughs> but she's 20 years old. What does she know about persevering through circumstances? Do you, ever, do you ever come up against that or do you ever think or do people ever say, well, that's sweet, but you haven't lived? Want to know a spiritual thing about that? Okay, it's yes. such a spiritual conversation. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with Bethel music. Mm -hmm. Love them. This is right after The Voice, and I did this super massive conference with mm -hmm. them. And I remember a lot of people was just kind of like, you should come to our worship school. You should come mm -hmm. to our Bible school. And not just them, but just it was a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of people looking to kind of just like place me um, under, I don't know, like a, you need to learn. Sure. And I remember I just was like, God, you know, maybe they think I'm too young uh -huh. to do this. Uh -huh. Just a thought in my head. I don't even know if I say God. I might have just thought it. Like, mm -hmm. maybe, I'm, maybe I'm too young to do this. Mm -hmm. And a girl literally turned and looked at me and said, God said, don't let no man despise your age. So that's my answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I definitely haven't been through a lot of things, but I've been through some things yeah. to, I know about perseverance, mm -hmm. um, and I just serve a, a great God, and I, how about I believe that, he, I don't have to go through it to believe that he sure. can get you through whatever. Uh -huh. I don't know, I never really thought about that. I think it's mature not to let that master your thought life. I don't think about because, it like that. Because we know through even scripture and through like Jesus's, um, uh, how he highlighted those who were young, and especially children, right? The faith of children literally built the church. I think in that's a lot what of it's ways. about. Yeah. It's really just about faith. Sometimes I think about those days about me being a kid, and not so much that my faith has shifted, but just it does change over time. Sure. You know, we always talk Evolves. about like mm -hmm. we want to be like a child again to with the presence of God, or it changes. Mm -hmm. experience in life changes things mm -hmm. so it's almost like the unknowing but God is everything mm -hmm. and you just want to have that faith of my God can do anything mm -hmm. he's everything until you start experiencing stuff you're like yeah Lord you can do it but <laughs> you know yeah so but I don't you know do you yeah. you're just making me think about things today <laughs> I don't think about this stuff I just be singing yeah. I mean stellar war nominations this year songs and soundtracks I think about this latest single being your third number one, and you're just now releasing your first full-length record. Do you ever think, uh-oh, am I gonna <laughs> peak too soon? <laughs> I think I don't wanna be a one-hit wonder. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Literally, that's what I think. Like, well, you're maybe like, a okay. three hit wonder, but. Listen, nine weeks is a long time to be number one. And I don't even think that I thought about it for the longest whenever I hit number one. You know what? <laughs> we talk about spiritual things, but <laughs> I'm very spiritual. Mm -hmm. Like, before I went number one, I remember I was sitting in the car with my mom and I was like, Mom, let's pray. Let's pray I go number one. Hey, let's just try praying for things. Like, we do stuff like that. Like, uh -huh. I just I was like, God allowed me to go number one. Literally. Three days later. And I'm not just going to act like it was, I know God did it. <laughs> Won't he do it? I know he did. So, honestly, I was super happy when it happened. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I'm always so focused on the next thing. Like I said, I don't want to be a one-hit wonder. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just, like, worried about the album. And, mm -hmm. But um, I haven't really grasped it i sure think, i think i'm kind of still maybe just... you never will to some degree maybe that is an indicator that this music and how you are doing music and how you will evolve in doing music is just a natural expression of who you are <sighs> amen <laughs> <laughs> hey. yeah <laughs> all right Battles for you, they gon' wonder how you sleep at night. Won't he do it? Ah, oh, yes, he will. If anybody tell you something different, you know that's a lie. You gon' look back and be so amazed. How it turned out, it's only his grace. Oh, won't he do it? He said he would. Nobody stopping my shine They try to break me, try to take me out But I got Jesus on my side I'm so bad I thought I'd die But ain't no power stronger than the one That came and laid down his life And I got mountains to climb, hey But the enemy can't stop me Cause there's a calling on my life So when I'm crying, don't last too long Cause he gon' step in and make it alright Say, won't he do it? He said he would. He'll fight your battles for you. They gon' wonder how you sleep at night. Won't he do it? I oh, yes, he will. If anybody tell you something different, you know that's a lie. You gon' look back and be so amazed. How it turned out, it's only his grace. Oh, won't he do it? He said he would. So I trust him at all times I'm about to lose it again I'm about to let him know where I'm from Don't take me there again I just call on Jesus, my friend Get me back in line one more time Cause he's always listening Ain't nobody perfect Everybody's hurting Need you whisper, Lord, save me from my weaknesses Hey, cause you're always on time Come and get your breakthrough Cause I'm gon' get mine Oh, won't he do it? He said he would He'll fight your battles for you Fight, fight, fight your battles for you Oh, won't he do it? Oh, yes, he will If anybody tell you something different You know that's a lie You go look back and be so amazed How it turned out It's only his grace Oh, won't he do it? I know he will, so I trust him at all times. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I know he will. I know he will. I know he will. I know he will. Won't he do it? He said he would. He said he would. He said he would. He said he would. Said he would, so I trust him at all times. Hey. I'll trust you, Lord. I'll trust you at all times. Oh, only do it. Said he would. 